Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, welcome everyone to the recording of On the Ball this week, um, the second of the season. Uh, yes, I did have a holiday last week. <laughs> for some people, it was, was quite controversial, but maybe I'll save that for the main pod. Um, good day to you all. Uh, I, I'm a bit more organised this time. You'll be delighted to know. Uh, so I had my script is ready. So there won't be like 20 minutes of meandering, maybe just three minutes, which reminds me I need to share this on Facebook, of course. I um, hope you're all well. Uh, now, it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit different. Let me try and work this out, um, how we're going to, how I'm going to show you this. So um, we've got uh, we've got our usual guests here. There they all are. Um, oh, Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> like, I can do that, Steve. See? So, there he is. Um, so there's Steve. Uh, oh, oh, no, let's do it. We've got. Ryan, there he is with very nice snazzy backdrop. Look at that, it's very, he's very tastefully done. And uh, Dan's here as well with a little bit more minimalist, but that's okay. That's kind of that's who Dan is, <laughs> I suppose. And I've muted them all. They can probably mute themselves, but um, we'll, we'll, we won't allow that. Uh, so that that's who we got on for the pod. And then we've also got special guest, Mr. Mark Carey. There he is. Um, I don't actually know where he is. I will ask him that question. Um, uh, he's in a house. Okay, he's at home. Okay, well, that's a good start. So there, there, there they all are. I'm going to get rid of them all now. <laughs> oh, no, Mark. Oh, look, Mark, you're, you're soloed. How exciting. Um, there we go. Uh, yes. So as always, this bodes quite well. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to do my, my sharing on the old Facebook, as always. Allow me to do that um, now. Um, and hopefully it'll work. Uh, and there's no way around this. So you've just got to deal with it, I'm afraid. Um, so yes, we've got the guests. We can obviously talk about uh, two games, um, which is very exciting. So we've got a, a, a fair review of the start of the season. We've got a home and an away game. And we've got a bit of previewing that we can do as well, of course, because we have um, we we have uh, two games coming up this week, which is very exciting too. Uh, I do appreciate that. I need to start getting a, a bit quicker at this bit. But you know, it's, Facebook's obviously taking a bit longer than it used to. There we go. We're on the last bit. And um, so we've got all that. We'll look forward to the week ahead. I obviously cannot wait for my trip to Hull. It's going to be exceptionally fun. And um, also, you know, we will take your comments and questions all the way through. I'll say this for Steve's benefit as much as everyone else's, but we'll keep an eye on the comments and questions. <laughs> Steve, he's nodding. That's good. Um, uh, that you put forward and we'll try and get a few in uh, during the live uh, podcast. But we will also put out a topic um that you might want to comment on too which i found particularly amusing i'm, I'm not sure if it's ironic or a, a genuinely funny one but we'll see what we get back because what's the worst that could happen you just put it out there and see what we get, see what we get back hopefully no one incriminates themselves too much or if they do no one who could act on that is watching i mean i, I doubt there'd be um any norwich fans who would ship in one of their own is that, is that the right thing to say probably um and yeah two new signings to talk about as well so all in all loads um there we go you'll be delighted to know i've done that i can get rid of that we're done um and i reckon we can kick on so all being well as i said uh we've got them all here uh there they are um i'm just going to um fiddle with that just take one um uh that's already uh, they're ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm going to add Mark in when we get there. Um, that's really exciting. And I think in this case, as you can see, this is overwhelmingly professional, but actually much more efficient than last time. So we're already making rapid improvements, just like watching Norwich, really. Uh, I say um, we crack on. And in that case, I hope you all really, really do enjoy the podcast. Away we go. Hello all and welcome to edition 108 of On The Ball, the Norwich City podcast that thought a clinical edge was what made the outside of a doctor's surgery look pretty. I'm Michael Bailey, I cover the Canaries for The Athletic and I hope this finds you safe and well. On the way, our winless wonders, referees, a law unto themselves and one hull of a weekend in store. Um, I think I might actually keep that one and, and use it again 
next week. That should work quite well. Uh, we'll work through all that and more with our guests this fine evening. They are, there they are, Norwich Number Wang Chief at NCFC Numbers, also known as our very own Steve Sanders. Hi, Michael. We have former Norwich City Head of Content and Programme Editor, Dan Brigham. Hello, Michael. And on the ball's official random quizmaster generator, Ryan Livermore. Hello, Michael. Seamlessly done on my own part there. I will take all the credit for that. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome all those out there listening and, of course, watching live. Um, thanks for joining us. How are we doing, Steve? How are you? Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. Obviously, not as well as you are having had uh, your week off. Um, I enjoyed your Instagram story today, which... Um, Seems a little bit defensive, but I don't know. <laughs> Wait till you listen to this podcast, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be an hour long rant about how I can have a holiday. All right. I, I, it's my own time and I can do what I want with it. Might be. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, well, I'm I glad you had a nice time anyway. I did go out on the front foot with that, admittedly. Um, <laughs> but there we go. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm good. Thank you. And I hope you are too. Um, Dan, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. Everyone missed you. I missed you. It's weird to have a, a Norwich season start without uh, without Michael, Michael Bailey's comments. Well, it, it didn't because I was at Cardiff. But yes, no point taken. And again, I'm going to be very defensive about this for, for the entirety when, of the you, next have hour. Have you got another one booked already? I have actually, yes, at the end of August. So, oh, um, you know, uh, see you all later. Not but even coinciding it with, a, with an international break. Well, well, I, I tried, but I, I couldn't do it. So I don't even think there is one until until the end of there's September. A month, uh, there's a month in November that you could, you could just take that whole month off, couldn't you? You, you, are, you are removing my content for later in the podcast. So it, <laughs> but don't rile me because I'm going to go off on one for about 20 minutes, I think. That's fine. It. You know, if you're, if you're not committed to the cause, then we, we can accept it. <laughs> I'm just, just going to bin it on. <laughs> Why don't I take my holiday when all of my family are still, you know, doing school and working? Why should, why should I have a holiday during... During the footballs, anyway, plenty more of that to come. Uh, Ryan, how are you? Hello. I think actually answered how they are. <laughs> Is everyone oh. all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm running on fumes because I'm working so much at the moment. I've been working non-stop at the most <laughs> crucial break. point of my work season. So, <laughs> you, you know, I'm, I'm just on fumes at the moment, Michael. Just bin it off. <laughs> just bin it off, right? Yeah, bin it off. Why not? Well, too anything, much of a pro, aren't you, Ryan? Too much yeah, of a pro know, to right. do something like that. I know, he just he just cares too much, if yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, well, you're still looking remarkably well. It's nice to see you sat next to the gorgeous home shirt. So, uh, how lovely. Um, now, uh, for, for those watching us live on your chosen social media platform, hi. Uh, we also want to hear from you during the course of the podcast. Uh, it can be uh, on absolutely anything I've written here, which seems incredibly brave and probably misguided. Uh, that said, if you have the motivation but are struggling with a reason, then we, we do like to supply you with a topic. Uh, this week, as suggested by our very own Zoe Morgan, we have uh, Max Aarons removed himself from the game on Saturday after being assaulted. When did you last extract yourself from a situation? I'll, you know, if you haven't got, an, I, I want to hear all your answers to that um, that are broadcastable. Uh, you know, I suppose is the way to want. go for it. Uh, you can just message in. And if you list, if you want to contribute to that, but are not listening live or watching live, have no fear. You can simply email us with your story or comment. And we can include it on a future pod. Uh, the address is Twitterkers, Twitter, K-E-R-S, Twitterkers at iCloud.com. What a sound start. I reckon we crack on with this week's headline act. Well, now, uh, we decided, uh, due to me having the audacity to have a holiday, uh, that we would return after two games of the season rather than one. Uh, the upshot, Norwich are still winless. Uh, but, <clears throat> excuse me, there's more than enough to discuss and even a couple more signings to roll out some carpet for. Um, we are also going to be joined by one of my athletic colleagues momentarily, which is very exciting. Um, but, but first of all, I'll come to you, Steve. First, um, two games in, uh, what are you made of them? similarities in the games or are you all about the differences uh no i think i think wigan was an improvement on cardiff um i think if if cardiff was the uh pre-pod intro to the first uh podcast that we had this season then wigan was was today's intro still a little <laughs> bit of room for improvement but we're getting there okay. um I, 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 yeah I, I definitely I, I think i came away from it feeling quite negative 
um, the fact that we hadn't won against, I would say, didn't look a particularly good side. Um, I think we probably did do enough to win that game, but I, th I think my initial thought was that a you know a, a 2021 18 19 team would have probably found a way to put them away. But then we didn't start well in either of those two seasons either. So I think probably just in, need to inject myself with a little bit of perspective and remind myself that there are another 44 games to go. This team hasn't won in a long time. Well, no, they haven't won in a long time. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, probably need to get themselves up to speed more than most. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think we were unlucky on Saturdays is the way of putting it. And I, I think it'll be interesting to see the test in the next four games when we've got, I think, Hull, Millwall and Sunderland, who I would expect could be pushing on the top half, if not higher. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to thoroughly sit on the fence and maybe reserve judgment until then. You're absolutely allowed to. We'll just take the rest of the month off as well. So we'll all we'll have a break. Um, I, I mean, Dan, they are the two things, aren't they, that Norwich didn't do very well last season scoring goals winning games i mean it and the uh, you know i guess the supporters went around for norris trying to feel their way into the season two years ago so it did it look a bit like that i mean the, the far post at the river end got away with a with a lot i thought on, on, on saturday <laughs> uh yeah if cardiff cardiff felt like watching a team that were entirely apathetic about being back in the championship um it was a bit of a miserable performance but saturdays looked like a team that sort of remembered that they're good at this level um, and that they can dominate teams at this level. And it was it felt like a team trying to find that rhythm again and finding a way to dominate and to be good at this level. So I think there were definite sort of green shoots um, there. And obviously, you know, coming off the back of a, lot of a season like last season where we weren't winning games, but it's also sort of worth remembering on another day without a you know cataclysmic error from Ben Gibson, we would have nicked that by a goal that game and probably deserved to win that by a goal. And 2021, of our first 12 wins that season, 11 of them were by one goal. We, we didn't blow away teams until really sort of January and February when we really got into our rhythm because teams just sat deep against us and they're going to sit deep against us again, as Wigan did on Saturday. Um, so we're going to have to expect that a lot. But I think, and the, the major difference between Cardiff is, and this has been levelled at Dean Smith's teams a lot. We couldn't really see what we were trying to do against Cardiff. But on Saturday, we definitely could see what we were trying to do, I think, which I'm sure your athletic colleague will speak more of uh, when he's on. But that it was pleasing to see there seemed to be a, a plan that Smith has talked about and now seems to be implementing with, with the incoming players as well. I mean, it did, it did strike me, Ryan, in both games. And I have taken the time to watch the Wigan game pretty much twice. <laughs> um, so... Um, but both sides were, were seemed pretty uh, average to below average championship sides, if I'm brutally honest, pretty limited in what they were trying to do. And um, I don't know, for me, Ryan, it almost felt like Norwich, you looked at them and they were looking at it thinking, you know, we're, we'll be all right, we're good enough for this. And and I don't know, maybe that, uh, um, that, uh, that desire and the fact that they still have to be proactive and making it happen themselves is something that they've got to kind of find for themselves a few game a few more games in yeah totally agree with that the the Cardiff game in particular I kind of felt that Norwich they didn't really it was almost like they didn't try to leave second or third gear really and you were against a team in Cardiff who had signed what was it they've signed 10 new players this summer so far and they had a completely new side and it's it's such a like a bland cliche but it, you've got to want it at this level because you you have teams every year who you, you seemingly write off from the get-go and they will just give it their all, come full steam ahead and they will rattle teams who um, come down from the Premier League. Like I've lost count now of the number of teams who come down, assume it's a walk in the park and then it takes them until October, November to get going. And by that time, it's, it's far too late. But you'd you'd think that there are enough players in this Norwich squad who have been here and done it before that they understand that there's more to it than just rocking up at three o'clock on a Saturday and, and, you know, putting in the minimal, minimal effort as it were. But then again, the counter argument to that is how many of these players are fed up of doing that? You know, like they've, there's almost a mentality of, oh, we're here again. Oh, okay. We've got Cardiff away. Have we? Oh, let's just see what happens. And then lo and behold, you, have one shot on target in what was it like an hour or something <laughs> stupid well, they, like that 
We're, we're going to find out the appetite very, uh, very soon. I think in the coming weeks, definitely. Uh, we, we've we've bigged him up, so let's uh, let's bring him in, shall we? Um, now, uh, uh, I was. Uh, it's time to bring. No, I'm going to say that in a minute. But it's time to bring in my athletic colleague uh, and a man far too talented to be confined to watching uh, Norwich every week. It's a data analyst at the Athletic, Mark Carey, and let's see if I can make this work, which I have. There we go. Um, Mark, hello. <laughs> Oh, you're on mute. There we go. There's always something. There we go. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Yes, there he is. Mark, welcome to On The Ball. This is very exciting for me. Thank you for having me. It's, well, to be honest, having reported on the game on Saturday, it was big Michael bailey size shoes to fill. So uh, I hope <laughs> I did you justice. Well, I hope you walked around Carrow Road swearing and cursing at me for having the audacity to take a holiday during the football season. Um, uh, now, I, I was obviously, the holiday was planned. I was going to be away. And I remember mentioning it to one of my editors that, you know, the, the game will be there if someone wants to go to it. And um, and they physically laughed at the idea that one of my <laughs> colleagues would want to go to Norwich Wigan on uh, one of the opening weekends of the season. But there you were, Mark. Um, how did you enjoy your trip to Carrow Road? Was it your first trip? It was my first trip to Carrow Road. I loved it when I was there. Getting there was a bit of an issue. Two replacement uh, services. I got a train and, yeah, two buses. And I planned to get there two hours before. I wanted to be very prepared. And I got there at 12.15. Kickoff was at 12.30. So I just about <laughs> scraped it. But once I was there, it was fantastic. It was really enjoyable. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into the game. But, yeah, I spoke to Dean Smith after. Um, some good reflections on that. And, yeah, planning to unpick. It is, it is worth saying you, you should go and read um, Mark's excellent piece uh, on the game, um, which he filed considerably earlier than I would have filed and um, is out there to read now <laughs> on The Athletic and it's gone down well with those who have read it as as well. Um, I mean, what, what you give us, Mark, is an external perspective of Norwich. You watch lots of football at varying different levels and you get to analyse it. So wh when you looked at Norwich on, on Saturday, what did you come away thinking? My main thing was that the... The build-up was was really good. It was really strong. You know, Norwich sustained attacks really well. And I think what the guys have said already, it just seemed to be right at that kind of top end, really. I mean, the numbers showed it as well in, in the piece that I had, that there was massive territorial dominance. There was a class above, really. Because you think about it, Wigan were playing in, in League One only a few months ago, a couple of months ago, and Norwich were playing in the Premier League. So the, the gap was sort of to be expected. But it, it was just almost... Uh, complacency maybe to be like well, we're, we're dominating them here we're taking many shots we'll come on to maybe how many of those are on target but it seems like you know these goals will probably come um and then it was that wasn't in the script we just gave the ball away and James McLean's gone and scored so I think it was a bit of a sucker punch obviously because Wigan didn't really have that much quality going forward um and then you're on the back foot and then you're chasing the game and then you know the the game sort of ebbed and flowed a little bit I think after the the wig goal um it did sort of take the sting out of the game a little bit um so probably for the final 15 minutes of the first half it was a little bit more flat but those that first half an hour i thought you know if this is the norwich that we're we're going to see for the rest of the season then you know you'll you'll be certainly there or thereabouts for automatic promotion but it didn't quite go that way in terms of the, obviously the result at the end yeah i mean did you make what did you make of the chances norwich created i mean they did didn't have much on target at all really really all game um obviously mm. there was one brilliant save from ben amos just to touch tim and pookie's shot in the second half on onto the crossbar um but they did sort of they did miss the target at the far post quite a lot in the first half and <clears throat> the quality of those chances so did you i mean is, is that probably where, where norwich need that improvement yeah i'd say so I, I looked at it there was so there's 22 shots in total um nine of them were outside the box um four of them on target so those sorts of you know numbers do suggest that you're not creating clear-cut chances and obviously they're not getting it on target as a as a consequence but i guess there is the the context and the caveat that wigan were sitting quite deep and it was hard it was quite hard to really kind of get in behind them so maybe that sort of lent itself to norwich snatching at chances just a little bit but yeah that first half you could, i was right behind quite a few of the the shots in that first half and you could just see that there was just a little bit snatching at it just just a little bit too much um so it was yeah kind of tough to see but i think that's that's the obvious takeaway from it isn't it, it just needs to be a little bit more um i think i put in the piece a little bit more kind of cold-blooded in front of goal and as i said you know and it's not news but Samuel Puki can't be relied upon to be 
the the sole goal scorer. It needs to be you know goals coming from all all different angles. So um, yeah, I, I think nine goals, nine uh, shots, sorry, um, outside the the box kind of tells a, a story in itself that they were maybe just trying to force it a little bit. But again, you got to have the context that Wigan were sitting deep, so they couldn't really get in behind them quite as quite as much. The game probably got a bit more stretched in the the second half, but um, certainly in that first half when they were peppering. Wigan's goal is probably because Wigan were, were sitting off quite a bit. You say you say nine goals. I think it might be nine goals for the calendar year. Ah, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Freudian um, slip. Yeah, there, yeah. Need, need to add to that. Um, I mean, you you've also seen a lot of different football styles, and, and part of your job is to break those down and, and into what makes them and what they look like. I mean, you got the chance to actually ask Dean Smith what his football style is, and then sort of put that together, I guess, with what you were what you were watching. If you were to kind of put the two together. And tell Norwich fans from an external perspective, this is, if you're going to write, you know, another piece on it, this is what the, the, the breakdown of the areas and the things that they're trying to do that you can see. Yeah, what he said, he wants, talking about off the ball, like wants to be very kind of forward thinking. And as soon as they lose it, want to win it back as quickly as possible. And that's kind of true for, for most teams, isn't it? It's not kind of too revolutionary, but especially at the weekend, it looked like Norwich were sustaining attacks really well. And, and again, maybe it is the context of Wigan were just kind of hitting it to the front man as, you know, as soon as they could. And then, you know, both Norwich centre-backs were just hoovering it up and starting again. So there was waves and waves of attack. And again, you think if you can do that for, you know, every game this season and just keep sustaining those attacks, you put yourself in a better position to get more shots on goal, more shots yeah, on target then, um, and more goals as a consequence. So, um, I thought Norwich sustained the tax really, really well. Um, one thing I noticed as well was just the rotations between between midfield and Campwell was was drifting all over. Um, and Smith said after after the game that he wanted to put, he said that oh no, uh, Hernandez had trained really well that week and wanted he ideally would have wanted to play him from the start, but with Campwell being able to to drift inside a little bit more and leave a bit more space for Janulis on the on the left hand side, then it was you know, a bit more of a conscious tactic. And I thought Campwell actually played really, really well, really confident, was playing with such freedom and dropped in really well. Um, Kenny McLean, when he pushed on, Campwell dropped in and there was some really good, nice rotations where there was always a free man on the ball. So I thought that was something which bodes well for for the rest of the season. I think I think you said it before on this podcast that it's a it's a big season for for Cantwell, obviously having been on loan last season and how much do Norwich need Cantwell more than Cantwell needs Norwich, you know? Um, so I think that, yeah, it's going to be a massive season for Cantwell. But he he was playing with such freedom and confidence that a fit and firing Todd Cantwell will be will be really good this season. Yeah, very, very beneficial. Um, I'll let the guys sort of come up with maybe some questions that they want to ask you um, so they can maybe wave furiously or nod and we'll, we'll get to those questions in a moment. Um, but Mark, you are on the On The Ball podcast. I think you know what that means. It means you get comments like this. Spoon Meat says, uh, I like Mark's toothbrush. <laughs> but it's, got, it's got a great view. Thank you. I'm at um, home, so it's yeah, it's got to be done. You are allowed a toothbrush at home. So that's that's fine, Mark. Just like people are allowed to go on holiday. It's absolutely fine. Um, uh, we, we did a great, <laughs> I say this, I mean, I, I so love doing it, but we did a great piece at the end of last season on <clears throat> looking for stats where Norwich were good <laughs> or not yes. the worst in the Premier League, Premier League last season. You can read that on The Athletic. It's a, it's a really lovely piece, and it's just great to spend that time with you, Mark. Um, uh, I have to say it was hard not to have a wry smile on the opening weekend of the Premier League season, watching Bournemouth sort of beat Villa 2-0. Easy does it. And Fulham leading twice at home um, against Liverpool as as well. And I think there was a stat on match of the day too that said that teams who pick up eight points from their first five games have a 96% chance of staying up. Um, and meanwhile, Norwich have probably skewed the recent stats to make it look really hard at actually staying up. Um, I, can, can you... I don't know how you feel about those other teams, but I mean, did did Norwich sort of screw it up a bit? Do you do you think that there are teams like Bournemouth and Fulham that are just going to have a better fist of it, or is that a bit simplistic? Yeah, I, typically, well, historically, I've thought of the, the teams who are more of the surprise package <clears throat> are the ones who typically I think fare better in the the Premier League. So probably looking at Sheffield United when they came up, they had the overlapping centre-backs you know when Leeds came up they had the relentless Bielsa press and the man marking system that people didn't quite know what to do and um, more recently than that I suppose Brentford coming into the Premier League and having the their set pieces the, you know the long throws and the way that they go about um, yeah you know dead ball situations was a bit of a shock as well so the the teams where they come 
with some, something a little bit different, I think, are the ones who who do fare a bit better. And Fulham, the, a couple of seasons ago when they came up and, and came straight back down, didn't really have too much of a, an identity and then that didn't you know, fare them too well. And I don't know whether Norwich maybe had that a little bit last season where obviously changing managers doesn't help in terms of identity, but was there anything kind of specifically different to to approach the game that, um, you know, that no one could deal with or get a handle on in you know, the first half or the first time that the team plays them and then eventually works them out. So I don't know whether it was that a little bit and that kind of then feeds into the the piece that I've done on Saturday and what obviously we can speak about is what exactly is Dean Smith's style? What exactly is he looking to, to do? Um, and when you haven't got that really, really clear cut approach, then maybe then you start asking questions about, you know, how you're going to go about the game. Brilliant stuff, Mark. Um, gentlemen, have you got any questions for Mark? Put you on the spot. Yeah, I've got, I guess um, we touched oh, no. on it there, Mark, about the style. And this is really the first time in a championship season where we look like we're trying to play 4-3-3, which we did against Wigan with two eights and a holding midfielder. Um, as someone who maybe doesn't watch Norwich as much and that you were, you were there for the first day, how did that sort of, how did you feel that um, paid off in attack and, and defence for Norwich? that new formation yeah i thought Sorensen dropped in really well between the center backs at times and really helped with that build up because max aarons is, is such a strong player going forward as, as much as anything so it allowed him to to get really high which i thought was was really good um I, I don't know whether we've spoken about it yet but nunez you know his debut was was really strong i thought he was a bit of a terrier off the ball and then on the ball i think there was a moment I think it was a sort of crossfield pass. I think Rashidza actually swapped to the left side briefly and he had a really good pass on him and just been able to spray it. So that he's a really good signing to be able to do that. But yeah, in build-up, there was there was good kind of dropping in um, between the two centre-backs, getting going, you know, Max Aarons, as you'd expect, being high up. Um, and I think, yeah, as I mentioned before, I think Todd Cantwell being able to kind of roam and, and drift a little bit was really key because you just couldn't pick him up. He was sometimes central. He was sometimes, like he did swap with Rashidza, um, early on, he then really kept his his width really well, hugged the touchline. I just think you couldn't really pick him up. So I think, yeah, it was, it was strong, strong through the middle. And, and those rotations, as I say, I thought were, were really good. Kenny McLean pushing on sometimes. And then it was just quite seamless in terms of almost a pulley system that then someone else would drop in. Um, so there was patterns. There were certainly patterns that were clear to see. Um, I think then when you get into attack, what you need to do, I think, is get bodies more around Timu Puki, where... You know, Rashica really does like to to keep his width. Todd Cantwell obviously likes to roam, and if you can try and get them a little bit more narrow, so that it's maybe just either side of the width of the penalty area, then you can start to have a bit more kind of interchange. And that was how the goal I thought came about, where it was a little bit more narrow. But if you really spread the pitch too wide and then have the ball, then it, there's. I think Puki got a little bit isolated, basically. So um, that would be my only thing to to improve upon. I thought. I was going to ask Mark, without throwing you under the bus a little bit, were there any players in that system where you thought this isn't working, this isn't your kind of system? Probably the latter. Not that it wasn't, you know, they weren't playing badly, but I think making sure, as I say, that Puki is, there's, there's players around him. Because there was sometimes, I think I mentioned it again in the piece, where he was just having to, to chase um, hopeful balls and by the end he was cramping up and it's not, he hasn't got the pace to to accelerate beyond people anyway. So I think if you can get bodies and fast bodies around him, I think Hernandez, when he came on, was brilliant for that. Really kind of tricky and trying to get forward as quickly as he could. Um, so it wasn't that, I mean, I'm not going to say that the, the Norwich aren't built for Timo Puki. That's obviously not what I'm saying. But uh, I think that, I think when Josh Sargent came on, I didn't think he played all that well. I mean, you guys would know better than me just how much yeah. of a future he has. Um but I think he was even backing out of kind of challenges a little bit sometimes in the air. So not necessarily that the system wasn't working, but when Josh Sargent came on, I, I just didn't think he added anything. Whereas I think most of the other substitutes did. Um, if that kind of hopefully answers your question a little bit. It's brilliant. I, I, Steve? I was just going to ask Mark um, what you made of the last sort of five or 10 minutes under Daniel Farker. We had a bit of a reputation, as you probably know, for, for scoring late goals in our championship campaigns. Um, it sort of all tactics seemed to go out the window and we just kind of threw everything at the wall and as many attacking players as possible came on. I mean, did did you notice anything coherent that, that I couldn't spot? Um, or did, did it just appear to you to be a, let's just fling enough mud at the wall and hope some of it sticks? Hmm. 
Yeah, interesting. It was, yeah, kind of chaotic. Um, I thought, I'm trying to think how much they actually were actually looking to cross it. I know that Norwich aren't exactly the, the tallest of sides, but I don't know how much there was actual crosses into dangerous areas where you can just get a, a flick on and then there's a loose ball and then you can maybe get something from there. I think it was maybe trying to not walk it in, but trying to just get into, it was too congested. And then sometimes crossing can obviously circumnavigate that a little bit. Um, I thought there was a couple of occasions where Hernandez had done a, you know, a lot, um, you know, attacking wise, but maybe dropped the shoulder, got into a position to maybe even shoot or cross. And then it was just that extra touch or that trying to beat the man just one more time. And I was thinking, you know, if you just take a shot, even if it's not on target, but it maybe goes into a dangerous area, then something can happen. So if you don't, take a chance there then definitely nothing's going to happen so that was sometimes where I was thinking just be a bit more clinical in terms of obviously trying to hit the target but try and actually release the ball and get it into dangerous areas and I think there were times when it was frantic but not necessarily coming back to it I guess full circle not really any any of that end product <sighs> M product. I feel we'll be saying those two words. Quite no, no, we're, we're already well versed in it, to be honest. Um, got an external question here from um, from Alex. Uh, good evening to you, Alex. Um, opinions on the atmosphere at Carrow Road from an outsider's perspective, which feels like a horrifically loaded question. So <laughs> you, you, there's no judgment here, Mark. Where you go? No, I thought it was a fantastic atmosphere. Um, really good atmosphere. There was so you'd be able to explain it better than me, guys, but. So that to my left, especially, there was a very vocal corner um, of the <laughs> stadium. The snake I, pit. The snake is that where it was? Okay. Yep. Sorry for my uh, ignorance there. But I thought that was, they really drove the, the atmosphere and the, the chanting the, the whole time. Um, well, maybe it's because they were in close proximity to me as well. But it was a really good, really good noise, really good atmosphere. Um, and so much yellow. I know that you guys play in yellow, but there were so many home shirts. And it was just great to see even, you know, getting to the, to the stadium. I thought it was a really really nice atmosphere and a really nice day as well so cannot complain beautiful weather in Norwich see Mark had a great time I love it <laughs> um and uh, so there we go um what uh, what's the uh well that's brilliant Mark thank you so much first of all is what I should say um what's the what's going to fill up the rest of your week by the way now you've fulfilled all your Norwich commitments well I've got a, a day off um towards the end of the week which I love those people at the Athletic are allowed um because it's my birthday at the weekend so I'm taking a bit of a shorter week um Do you want to go to Hull for your birthday? But... <laughs> yeah. no, Norwich Hull? Yeah yeah happy happy to... that'd be a nice birthday present actually. Um <laughs> but no aside from that I'm uh, I'm gearing up to to get a lot of things ready for um for the season really that you know we've been doing quite a lot with transfers and stuff like that and now things are actually start football's actually started to get going. Um I want to make sure that all of the well, if you guys as the writers are, are prepared and, and ready for um, a lot of our visualizations and data so we can get it to you as quickly as possible. Look at that. Well, it's such a professional answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Have a brilliant birthday, obviously, and um, enjoy your day off. Uh, last question. Are Norwich going up? I think so. I think yeah. so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you guys are going to finish second, oh. but I'm going to say you're going up. Okay. Who's going to win the division? I'm going to say Blackburn. Whoa! Oh, wow. They um <laughs> they they put out quite the video on their TikTok um <laughs> uh, aimed at Russell Martin uh, today. I did notice, so uh, yeah, we maybe we can talk about that one another time. Mark, thank you so much for coming on. A, I hope you get to watch Norwich again, and B, um, will you come on the podcast again? Of course, I'd love to. Yeah, thank you for having me, everybody. I really enjoyed this, so thank you for me. Star. Cheers, Mark. Tom, man. Round of applause, Cheers, guys. Mark. Well done. Thank you. All what the best. Superstar. We'll send him off on his way. There he goes. Um, and hopefully he will come back to Norwich. That was lovely, wasn't it? Thank you so much, Mark, for making the time and for then doing a brilliant job, um, doing his job at Cara Road. Um, and I said, you can read Mark's piece on the athletics, definitely worth it. Um, he did touch on Marcelino Nunez, uh, who we got to watch. Um, I, I have to be honest, I was amazed that he started. It just doesn't normally happen. Yeah. Normally they get bedded in. <laughs> and one of the things that went through my mind in the car as I was driving back from the West was that's really desperate. Um, but then to watch the game, um, I was like, oh, no, he's a really good player and he's really up fit and, and ready to go. And um, and Ryan, uh, what did you make of him? Because it, I, I was quite impressed. I was very impressed. I agree with what Mark was saying. Um, bit of a terrier. And for ages, the... Uh, oh, we're moving. We're good. <laughs> the uh, And for ages, I feel like the, the the turnover in possession has been a bit slack 
and you need someone to be able to pick up that pace. And when Dean Smith, Dean Smith, when Dean Smith was at Aston Villa, he liked to play with two kind of high intensity eights. You know, I remember John McGinn having a huge part in that team. And I feel like Nunez, certainly from what we've seen, will play a, a similar role to that. Um, it's a bit unlucky not to score. I, th- I thought he, he clearly likes a shot from long range, which I, I can get behind. You know, especially when you're going to come and get up against a lot of teams who, who are going to sit on the edge of their own penalty area, you need someone to just have a go at some point. And he looks like he had an eye for that. Um, don't want to big him up too much because we don't know anything else. Uh, we, we've got a list of players who have had fantastic first games and then um, have tailed off, let's say. But No, I can't, I can't <laughs> surely there aren't any of those. <laughs> Absolutely not, Stephen Naismith. No. So no. we we uh, need to be wary of that. But as it stands... I'm liking what I'm seeing. Um, Jen, anything stick out with you from uh, Mr. Nunez? I mean, we also had Gabriel or Gabby, as he's been nicknamed, I think, by the coaching staff. Uh, Sarah, come on for his uh, late cameo, I suppose would be the technical parlance for it, Dan. Uh, Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that, Ryan, about other players who've had great debuts and then just disappeared because at one point he reminded me of uh, Duda's debut when he looked excellent, <laughs> great first touch, great vision, created chances, etc. against Bournemouth, I think it was. Um, but yeah, he, look, he looked he looked really good. He had that ability where he, it looked like he was thinking ahead of the game and thinking a little bit quicker than most other players on the pitch. Dare I say it, the kind of ability that Madison and Wes and Buendia had just to make decisions before uh, anyone else may have thought of that decision. Um, you you saw you mentioned desperation getting him in there, Michael. Which, in some in some ex, some extent, I think you're right because I think Smith was is desperate to play that four three three with two number eights, as Ryan says, who do drive forward, who do carry the ball. Which is exactly why we bought Nunes or Nonyes, as Norwich City seemed to want us to call him. I think Nonyes, yeah. and we've brought Sara I mean, in as well. It's definitely so, a who. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're a pronunciation guy, which I think Connor Southwell tweeted a photo of, suggested non yes, so, but who knows? Um, but there is that desperation from Smith to get that midfield clicking. And I think it's worth remembering that our midfield in that first game against Cardiff with Sorensen and Kenny McLean is so much below the standard of the midfield that got us promoted before with Skip, Tetty, Moritz Leitner, Mario Vrancic, uh, Tom Tribal, so much below that standard that. It's kind of hard to gauge where we're at compared to those two seasons and hard to gauge Dean Smith's impact because he is dealing with less quality at the moment. And what we need, obviously, is not Nunez, Nunez and Sara to match the quality of those former midfielders that we had at this club. And if we do, then hopefully we'll start to see things clicking. Um, but that's a long way of saying, yeah, I thought he looked really excellent. <laughs> It, I mean, it, <clears throat> yeah, it's very interesting. I was trying to work out if I saw a graphic that had Norwich actually playing more of a four, because I thought it was a four, two, three, one initially that they put up, but then I didn't, maybe it wasn't. Mm, and I, I think Kenny was, and, yeah, Kenny and four, Norwich three. were much, much yeah. uh, further advanced than Sorensen. Yeah. Um, and I think Dean Smith said as much today as well. Um, and I thought Kenny McLean did okay, but it's a really interesting point you make on the on the midfield, definitely. And um, we've got plenty of uh, more time to to judge him, hopefully, um, as as well as Sarah, who I thought came on and looked made a couple made a couple of really good runs. I thought at first and foremost, which is nice to see Norwich breaking up um, lines like that. Um, there has been another signing as well, Steve, which almost passed me by, to be honest. And they don't normally, <laughs> um, but I was off. Um, which is Aaron Ramsey on loan, not that one. Uh, on loan from Aston Villa. Uh, it's been confirmed to wear the number 20 shirt. Um, I find this one quite interesting, Steve. I, you know, I just, I, 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 I'm I, almost sitting here going, I don't really, I don't almost understand it, but I don't know. Uh, what, did you get, what would you say to me? Well, <laughs> it'll be good for him to get some minutes before Wales's World Cup campaign went to ha, 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 ha. Let's see if I can make that joke become funny between now and the end of the season. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think it's I think it's actually not a bad signing. It's kind of a weird one. I think the, the implication, because he's a Villa player, is that, oh, well, it's just Smith picking up his old players. You know, I, it, I, I do think it's in an area where we definitely need, you know, I, well, assuming he can play kind of in those two wide roles or possibly even as a, um, you know, one of the two more advanced centre midfielders. Um, so seems like he'll be a versatile player. He's a young player who's going to be hungry with a point to prove, which 
yeah, kind of looking at our attacking options and um, how much they might have to prove individually. Uh, I, I think they could probably do with someone providing that kind of competition. Do I know how good he is? Absolutely not. Have we had some, you know, great loanies from the Premier League at this level? Yeah. So he could be an Ollie Skip or he could be a Marcus Edwards. You know, we we don't know. I suspect he'll probably be... Is it Marcus Edwards? I genuinely can't remember that. Yeah, yeah. No, you yeah, just lost, lost confidence there midway through. Um, I think it'll almost certainly be somewhere in between those two. But definitely, you know, I think, I think to provide some competition in those wide areas is absolutely what we need and I expect he will start tomorrow I, I would guess that he'll be involved from the beginning yeah I think they've just got to get clearance for him to play Villa have certainly allowed him to play and according to Dean Smith he can play as a 10 he can play either side he can also play as an eight so I think there's plenty of options there I just personally just didn't probably expect them to bring in a lone player just for it being alone so obviously he he has a great pedigree um and you know he's did well last season in league one um is he is he related to jacob ramsey is that right he's yes, his brother think, isn't he his i brother, think yes, younger yeah. brother mm -hmm. so who is a fantastic player himself isn't he as norwich found out last season so um the yeah, there's obviously an excitement there uh, i did just wonder if they were going to sort of um avoid doing something like that given that they've got their own youngsters that maybe they would want to um I, I, push on but so i i don't really i i kind of get the argument but if you've, you know, like a lot of the youngsters who we have have sort of proven that they're not really good enough. So I, I kind of think if there's a better one out there, why wouldn't you take them in a season when, you know, it's it's fairly important that we go straight back up? I, I find that argument a bit weird, to be honest, to strengthen the squad. And is a part of it that Roe is out for a couple of months? He's going to be out for some time. They're not putting a time frame on it. It's a stress-related injury. Um, I know he had his foot in the boot, so I'm guessing it's an ankle, not injury. I haven't. I might have come up while I was away, so I don't exactly know. But um, yes, so he's out for a while. And also Tony Springett rolled his ankle in preseason and hasn't been involved either. So, and I mean, I kind of, you know, clearly Aaron Ramsey is a more talented player than both of those two simply because of what he's done already. <laughs> so I am well aware of him um, and I'm sure that Aston Villa have really high hopes for him. So um, uh, I, I guess just because there's so many options in that end of the pitch, I was just surprised that they brought someone else in and someone on loan who I guess has arrived to get some minutes, but Norwich may not benefit from that beyond what he does this season. So, but maybe that will be enough. Maybe. Maybe. That will be enough. The the Onel clamour has returned though uh, in full force, um, and he did play well actually on Saturday. Um, it's just uh, interesting to see people saying, "Well, he has to start now. He must. He must start next game." And um, mm. I think, to be honest, I think he might be good doing exactly what he did on Saturday. Now that there's five subs, you know, he might be one of those kind of Alessio Russo style finishers, um, you know, who can who just plays the last half an hour in games and can do that against tired legs. Um, but it's nice to have that option, right? Yes. As long as we see some end product, <laughs> we're all we're all there. Um, so that would be grand. Uh, no one else has left yet either. We wait for two weeks and no one else has left. Was that, were there left? rumours that Sky reported that um, the Borussia Mönchengladbach's sporting director was there watching Rashica? They did, yeah. So yeah. Farker's going to take him Rashica back? I mean, would strike me as strange <laughs> if I was honest, but, you know, <laughs> could happen. It was interesting actually to see Rashica on the right. I'm not. I don't really recall seeing him much out there, and his job not being to cut inside, but just to hog the touchline and try and get to the byline. And you know, I've seen mixed reports, but I thought he, it was one of his more promising games for us. I thought he created a little bit. There was a natural sort of affiliation with Max Aaron's on the right as well, and I thought he linked up pretty well with Nunes and uh, Todd. You know, he drifted out as he always seems to, but I thought he had a bit more impact than. He has done in previous games. I guess. Um, I guess Ramsey arriving does make me think that they expect that Milot won't be here by the time the window closes. Uh, I think we probably had that conversation before mm. Um, mm. as well. Um, ten million. Is he doing what a ten million pounds winger bought for the Premier League should be doing in the in the Championship in those first two games? Mm. Got an assist. We'll see. Got, got. He did get an assist. That's true. So <laughs> we're, we're sort of the, the, I take it all back to be honest. Yeah, the only twelve goal. million, make it twelve. <laughs> twelve, yeah, yeah. Sell him on. Um, right. Well, I think that does all that. Um, uh, let's wrap up the opening half. 
maybe maybe less and more um uh, with our list of things we are not going to talk about i hope you've come prepared with your things we are not going to talk about does anyone want to go first on this list yes well, i'll go you? first because i am scared the other two have to take in this point as well okay. i am not going to talk about the amount of people who do not know the rules of dangerous challenges in football at the moment and i don't want to talk about how max Aaron's should have had a penalty and Naylor should have had a red card and how there's an argument at the moment of the game's gone, everyone's soft and he went for the ball, so it's fine. No, it's not. Uh, it's a dangerous challenge. It's a red card and a penalty. Yeah, I, I, I do think there's a debate to be had over whether it's a red card, but that but that's sort of by the by because at no point is it not a penalty. And I, 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 but it really interesting. It's so interesting because in an, in an EFL context, like the, 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 the coverage on 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 um, didn't feature it on Sky. Uh, well, it wasn't on the it wasn't even on the club highlights, was it? But the Sky coverage as well was very was borderline. You know, I can see why the referee didn't give it. I'm just saying, like, what are you talking about? Because in any top level of football, it would take five seconds and it would be a penalty. The fact it's touched the ball, got the ball forced where first, whatever, is completely and entirely irrelevant. It's a dangerous challenge and it's a foul. It's, you only have to look at every other foul that the referee gave over the course of the 90 minutes. It's Sky amazing. did their usual um, roundup of controversial incidents this morning and covered that one. And all the former referees and everyone involved said it was definitely a, a penalty and a red card. Oh, they did, the did they? They said it was a red card as well. That's the Dermot Gallagher one, isn't it? On yeah. Oh, was, fair enough. It was Good. such a stonewall penalty that Hodgie was even annoyed that you even put it up for debate, <laughs> Ryan, on Twitter. By I know, I saw that. Don't, I even, saw don't that. even question it. How dare yeah. you even give people the option to say that it wasn't? I know, but I, to be honest with you, I did it out of curiosity to kind of see who gets it and who doesn't. You know, that's <laughs> kind of why I did it. And my favourite one is someone just replied with, oh, he's gone for the ball. I'm like, yes. Obviously, he's gone for the ball. That's the whole point of tackling your wet wipe. But the follow through <laughs> is just like utterly no. ridiculous. But, but the, it, yeah, I mean that's the thing though. You know, they were talking to Chris Hutton and, and Michael Brown, who you know, in his you know vocabulary, it's obviously a perfectly fine challenge because it was the sort of thing he did. But you know, they were literally like, "Oh, it's me. I can see why." Even Don Goodman as well. And it's just like you you absolutely to lose and and that's why i spent all our season going yeah i know people don't like how var works but i would still much rather have it because it would have literally taken five seconds and, and instead we have to sit there going well this is crap i was just going to make the exact opposite point i bloody love this this is no. exactly why i enjoy yeah. being a <laughs> these kind of discussions give me this all day long absolutely brilliant let's, oh. stay, let's i mean I, oh. I know it's it's dying out because uh var is coming to, you know Todd Campbell started calling for it. This is the uh, this is the beginning of VAR in the championship, I think. But um, yeah, miles bad. Give me give me terrible championship refs over um, and the, waiting for decisions. Wrong decision. And equally on that, I'd rather it. I'd rather that decision be wrong and be able to celebrate Norwich's goal without worrying that Aaron's was offside Correct. or that yeah, someone else yeah. was offside in the build up. Really? Uh, being overturned by the AI. It's it's absolutely it. absolutely yeah. marvellous. And then and then coming home and being uh, coming home and was like, was it a penalty? I don't know. Maybe it no, was. No, it was it obviously a penalty because <laughs> yeah, but not. But I don't know that from where I'm ten sitting. seconds. But the referee you know. should. Oh my god, I can't. I can't. We can't oh. all just watch the game on TV like you, Michael. Some of us oh. are there in the fans, you know. That's <laughs> fair. I cannot believe you said, like. Oh but, yeah. And okay. on that, on the referee, the one thing I don't want to mention is the fact that referees have been told this season to crack down on time wasting and Ben Amos was time wasting from about seven minutes <laughs> yeah. in and finally got carded in about the 95th minute on Saturday. He should have been sent off about three times the amount of time he wasted during that. They were on it. Again, they were on it in the Premier League. I reckon in the, in the Championship they'd be like, yeah, no, you know, no one watches. Don Goodman will say there was a, you know, <laughs> that'd be fine. I just, ah, uh, I, yeah. I can't. Uh, it's like people say we won't have anything to discuss if 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 you know we don't have any bad decisions. I mean, we we would we would. Quite I mean, it's really it's totally not that because we could go on and complain about VAR all day, but <sighs> I just think it it allows the game to flow much better when and and people to get angry about things. It's but, just fantastic. I love it. Who knows with the standard of referee in the championship whether it would have been overturned on VAR anyway? Who who knows who would have been on VAR? <laughs> I'm up, I'm up for bringing in VAR in the championship if it's also terrible. Like if they just get Max stuff would have wrong. been booked for diving instead. Yeah, yeah. yeah if anything, you went down too easily. Random decision um, generator. Um, speaking of yeah. Max, thought he was absolutely excellent and kind of looks at this point he's kind of playing worryingly well. Me, what have we got? 
23 more days of this window being open. He just looks a cut above. And I also liked it, him giving it back to the Wigan fans for, um, <laughs> for yes. chanting it when Dimmy was down injured. So, um, yeah, he was my wa- great. My wife says, why did, Why would footballers score and then just look so miserable? <laughs> he did look so angry when he scored. He came, up, he came back up to the other end and just sort of had a big sulky look on his face. It was fantastic. Uh, I have to say, we have to take that with all performances between now and the end of August. If they're to carry any credit, then they need to continue beyond the closing of the transfer window. <laughs> that is a rule, mm. to be honest, for, for anyone. Um, we do obviously wish uh, Dimi uh, Yanulis a speedy recovery. He's injured his ligaments, but he hasn't broken his ankle. It was actually more innocuous than I was expecting when I saw it. Um, uh, but obviously it's still uh, horrendous. Although some people were telling me it would have been better if he'd broken his ankle. I don't know. I haven't had an ankle injury like that, but, uh, uh, you know. It's, 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 a, it's a ligament injury, so let's just hope he gets back as soon as possible. It's probably going to be at least two months. We'll have to see. I hadn't realised Ben Godfrey actually broke his ankle or his leg, didn't he, um, mm. on the weekend as well. So, of course, wish Ben, um, while he's playing for Everton, wish him a speedy recovery too. He's going to be out for three months. Um, I didn't want to talk about the fact that Along Come Norwich have written a post about the atmosphere and the flags at Carrow Road. If you were wondering, why aren't there all these flags? Um, go read that. It's really interesting. It's on their website and um, you'll find it on Twitter somewhere. So I didn't want to talk about that. Anything else anyone wants to not talk about? Um, well, just as you mentioned, Dimi, I thought McCallum looked good when he came on. Um, and hopefully, you know, well, now we'll get to see what he's about. I know uh, Dean Smith mentioned in his press conference that uh, Jakob Sorensen can play left back. So, but I would imagine we'll see a bit of McCallum now and kind of quite looking forward to that, really. Is it interesting? That's the first time Dean Smith mentioned it. So, um yeah, quite uh, quite clear that he wanted to uh, that, that someone's told him that that can um, help um, cover <laughs> left back now. Um, so I, so that's there, and um, I, I assume it. He, he can't play left back until uh, Isaac Hayes back fits as well to take the central midfield role. Yes, otherwise he's um, playing central midfield. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Although Isaac's on his way back soon in a few weeks as well. Um, so I think that's all those things. Um, I think I've covered off my holiday. Um, someone did liken it to me uh, being uh, getting a job as a Santa and taking off Christmas, which I thought was a little harsh. Um, uh, and uh, can I just say, um, someone decided to cut out eight seconds of my video verdict and then put it up online completely out of context because they literally cut out the words first half before the bit they put out. Um, which was very well, annoying. That was the only uh, thing you tweeted about on holiday, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> angry having that and that and my Ben Kensel interview, which you can read on the Athletic. But um, you know, when you're being you felt like you're being done a horrendous wrong, I was just like, no. But, was it um, was it anyone important though? Or was it some no mark from Cardiff? Uh, it was just a just a student in Wales. So okay, hopefully he's not the studying. Jer- hopefully he's not studying journalism because he missed the clip where I said Cardiff would do well to finish outside the bottom half, which I thought was overly harsh. To be honest, <laughs> that's the bit I'd have clipped out. Um, they will. They were rubbish. Oh gosh, the two teams we've seen so far have been so bad. Wigan, sorry, Dan, Dan, Wigan before they scored their first goal were seriously seriously dreadful we had 10 yeah. shots in our first 25 minutes which yeah. is madness. they, they look like they did not expect us to line up like we did in that formation i was just i was just going to say actually on on bad editing michael with um i don't know if anyone else saw the itv highlights of our game that mm. got rid of all conventions and decided not to do it in chronological order so they had wigan scoring before uh, the sernson um well, the Sørensen shots and the Sørensen uh, when he gave the ball away and they nearly scored uh, before that and they missed. And they had one of our shots before another one of the shots. So they just moved everything out of chronological order, which um, it was a deliberate act. And they're going down some sort of Christopher Nolan uh, postmodern <laughs> cinematic uh, delivery of their highlights. And maybe I'm all for it, actually. It makes it a little bit more interesting. Like, you might make some games. Much more all of the highlights just cut like memento from now that on. That would be funny. <laughs> How, how did we get to that point? Let's find yeah. out. <laughs> oh, wow. Imagine it. I, I think surely it's quite difficult to do that, isn't it? I mean, I'm not an expert in video editing, especially, but surely, surely you know, time it, stamped. It, it comes in chronological order, right? So why would yeah. you wow. then, you know, chuck that over there? It depends and, if, you, if you're chopping it up and putting it forward, you might put it back in the wrong place without realizing it. And before mm. you know it, it was 4 0 before it was 6 <laughs> 0 or whatever. You know, you know what I mean. Um, okay. The only other thing I didn't want to talk about. About, although I really did want to talk about was uh, Lauren Hemp 
Um, obviously, England women are just brilliant. And um, I missed her being at Carrow on Saturday, which, to be honest, I was probably more gutted about than, than missing the game because I wanted to tell her how, how well she'd done. Um, and uh, I think she's a superstar. So uh, I think everyone's really proud of her. I got to spend the semi final at North Walsham Town, which was really fun watching it with them because um, they were so desperate for her to do well as well as the rest of the of the women. Um, I mean, if, if all this doesn't spur Norwich on to fully get behind the women's team, then they should get some people in who do, as far as I'm concerned. So <laughs> I hope they have a really brilliant season. Um, I think we're all done there. Um, have we got uh, any questions or topics or comments? What have we got, Steve? Have you seen um, any, have any um, come across with the way they're trying to extricate past situations or anything they have not um oh. as far as i can tell Stephen h has asked Jeez. do we do norwich have the players to play to pookie's strength should we let him leave yes or no pookie out no okay that's quick and easy <laughs> um, <laughs> evening all says Stephen stimmons can anyone explain to me how sergeant gets on the pitch ed of hugo again you can just say no <laughs> go on i did the last one um money paid <laughs> well okay. ryan's going for corruption <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> okay uh, allegedly straight up bungs um well he was sort of pushed out wide wasn't he sergeant the idea was or they didn't seem to play there whereas hugo would have gone straight down the middle this is true yeah. might be a position that's a, that's a good point um and will grant e7 or maybe will grant y7 i don't know do any of you know the last player bar gibson to have at least three or more different squad numbers in each season wow so 34 oh, in 2021 that's a question for you Steve, in, sure yeah i feel like if no well i'm kind of hoping one of you's gonna have an answer so that i don't have the inclination to look um, this one up because i will have to do it if, um... <laughs> I, i'd be surprised if it was anyone going down in numbers um um not from this current lot but russell martin if i remember had number six the number two the number five as job. good as i did got. and what was he when he first started was he not like was he like 20 oh, i don't know because he came no, on he line, went, didn't he he was, he was he was number six when he came on line he was number six when he came on line. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a youngster it's going to have to be a youngster i think and i mean anel's been from 25 to 11 and then back again but um mm. uh, do they, do they have did he he changed numbers at least once, didn't he? Oh, maybe. Mm. Uh, Gary Doherty was twelve and twenty-seven. I don't know if he had a third one there. Oh, I really nine. hope, by the way, that Will Grant has the answer to this and isn't isn't just asking. Yeah, if yeah. We yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, Will, come on, put your money where your mouth is. I think um, if you've got <laughs> pen and paper, Steve, you'll need to write that one down and see if you can find uh, anyone who is. Oh, there he looks. He's already. On. I think. I think <laughs> we need to. The lesson in this though is that we need to put Gibson back to number thirty-four so that he can rediscover his uh 2021 <laughs> form yeah it wasn't a great moment i mean i mean norwich are taking risks at the back aren't they by being so stretched because i think when he lost the ball it was literally a 5v2 in wiggins favor <laughs> or it may, maybe it was the one where Sorensen got pushed off the ball well, but yeah, one of those I mean, it, was, it, was it was ludicrous how and i mean that is a you know you would never do that at Premier League level because it's a goal every time. And at Championship, they just like put a cross behind the, <laughs> behind the goal and things like that. So, I think we would do it at Premier League level, to be fair, but, but no one else would. <laughs> fair point. Well, yeah, were we really a Premier League team? I don't know. Yeah, anyway, um, we've had already had enough Premier League chat, I think, for for a, for a Championship podcast. Um, uh, in that case, I reckon then we should probably move on to a bit of John Motson, shouldn't we? So let's uh, let's have a bit of this. This is almost fantasy football. Well, we certainly hope so, John. Um, uh, what a what a few days we have coming up. Uh, Birmingham at Carroll Road on, on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to being back at Carroll Road as I haven't done it yet. Uh, I was off last week. Um, and then, of course, we have a trip to Hull on Saturday. Um, anything, what's, what's exciting us about these? I mean, hopefully Gabrielle, Gabby, Sarah will be starting uh, tomorrow. Anyone else we want to see? We mentioned Aaron Ramsey. Anyone else left? Do we want to see? I Thanks. would like to see Daniel Sanani start. Player of the season, right, Ryan? My player of the season. He'll, you'll see. Already. You'll see, guys. It'll kickstart tomorrow night. I promise you. Don't quote me on that. Don't clip me. <laughs> well, you can quote That's yourself. The, that was a question I was going to ask. Um, actually, what is what is he? What is Daniel Sanani? Where where should he play? What does he do? That's good. Is he just Tony Andrew? 
what <laughs> oh, what does he do? Does that does anyone else know what he really does? Yeah. What he's affected uh, at? My dad asked me. And this isn't like, this isn't writing game. him off, by the way. He he may well be very good. I just don't really for, having seen him only a few times for Huddersfield and obviously for Norwich in the last couple of games in brief substitute appearances. I can't quite work out what he is. I I really like the pass that led to the pass that led to Pookie's shot that hit the bar. I know that sounds like a very specific moment, but that was a neat ball into Cantwell's feet. Um, that was the best thing that he did in that game. So maybe he's that sort of player. I don't know why I've interjected first there, because I don't really know either, Dan. I feel like Michael was able to give him genuine insight that I've just cut across. Come on, Michael. <laughs> right. No pressure. I, I, I guess at the moment he's probably two players in that he is wanting to come deep and play those balls through lines. And he obviously has a bit of vision so he can pick that pass. Um and then there's the other player that probably played more often for Huddersfield that is able to play in those sort of three support roles, which exist in a 4-2-3-4, a 4-2-3-1, but not maybe the 4-3-3 as much, um, and sort of get about Pookie and, and also carry his own goal threat. So um, in an ideal world, you'd narrow him down to one of those two positions and, and, and put him in the formation that works. I mean, I don't... <sighs> I'm I still sure. look at I, I still look at Rashidza and try and work out if that's actually working or not, or whether he's playing because everyone likes him and he costs a lot of money. I mean, I don't know if Danell might be better in one of those more advanced positions because he will come in and be closer, and he will be one of those players that's closer to Tamu Puki rather than Milot, who doesn't really get in the box unless he's running on it, running on the ball from forty yards. So um, maybe he's that. Well, this is why I quite like the idea of him because I'm pretty sure at Huddersfield last season he played at times up front with, I want to say, Danny Ward. And he sort of dropped deeper and linked the midfield three to the to Ward. So I'm wondering if there's something in that, maybe as the, the closest link to Timu. But I again, I could just be making making that up. But I quite like the idea of having him as that sort of almost a, a false nine up front with a nine kind of style. But I'm not sure that will be a system will play that much, now, especially now we have... Hayden coming back, which will allow Sarah and Nunez to break forward as two eights. I mean, we could have a completely different midfield um, mm. in, a, in, a, in a matter of months, which yeah. would be uh, interesting. I say, I mean, obviously we've seen some of them, so not completely new, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, Hull, Hull's interesting, um, mainly because I know that they're a team that have basically said we're going to finish in the top six this season. So, um, you know, the one thing where everyone sat there saying, oh, well, Norwich always do this anyway, and they they go up and what have you. There are a lot of teams who are pretty hungry, Steve, and it does put the pressure on if you sort of coast through and think you're entitled to something. Yeah, it's going to be a good litmus test, I think, because they had a good home win, um, I think maybe against Bristol City on the first day where they scored right at the end. And I guess there was probably something of a feel-good factor there anyway, um, given that, you know, new owners, a bit more ambition. So I think it's going to be a it's going to be a tough game. We we don't have a great record at the KC Stadium. Whether that makes any difference to anything, I I don't know. Um, but I think Hull are a team that probably do have a little bit more that you know have a few more designs on finishing in the top six. You've said than either Cardiff or Wigan would have. So yeah, I I have this feeling, and you know we're working off a sample size of literally two games, but it might be an Alex Neal type season where, uh, but second time around, where we're a fair bit better at home than we are away from home. And I hope to be proven wrong by that on Saturday. But um, I don't know why I've just got a nagging feeling that we're we're not going to rise to the occasion on Saturday. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do think we'll win in the cup tomorrow, though. Easy peasy. So uh, I mean, nice, a nice league cup run will uh, offset the disappointment of. Uh, wow, I mean, it certainly made a hell of a difference last season. That, that <laughs> wonderful six nil win over Bournemouth. Um, and there we go. Um, uh, I guess we're at the point where it's um, Kenny other business. Um, anything anyone else wants to bring up? Any more? We've got a good question here from James Rushmore. I'll bring in any thoughts on the influence Alan, Russ, uh, Alan Russell's had at Norwich. Too early to notice the change. Obviously, been brought in as set-piece coach. I mean, I think it's, it's quite clearly Norwich are trying to be more creative from set-pieces. At the moment, it almost feels like they're being... Uh, it's almost a bit too... Uh, how much? They're overcomplicating it, I suppose. Where It's like a lot. They're trying to be too clever. And so it may be that's... Um, you know, hampering its effectiveness somewhat initially. I don't know. I mean, it was the closest they came to scoring in Cardiff. And they created chances at home with it as well, Dan. I suppose one noticeable thing is corners have been taken by Todd, which 
I mean, he never he's never been on set pieces for us, which always struck me as a bit weird as, you know, someone with his technical ability should be pretty decent at set pieces. And they've been quite good. He puts them in, when he's just putting them into the area, he's putting them into good, dangerous areas. So maybe we've found out that Todd is actually an excellent set piece taker. What we did miss on um, uh, Saturday was Big Grant Hanley's head on the end of some of those uh, crosses <laughs> into the box, though. Which brings me on to a Kenny other business question. Um, it does Hanley come straight back in next Saturday against Hull? Because obviously, well, Omar Bamadeli did the little we had to do brilliantly and with a lot of class. Gibson um, did the little we had to do with not a lot of class. He had one of those games uh, for Norwich. Um, but, you know, they're, they're the natural pairing because it's left foot, right foot. But does Hanley come straight back in, do you think? I, I think Hanley comes straight back in. Uh, to yeah. me, um, I mean, I'm a bit of a Gibson sympathiser, but he didn't look ready. Like, that's the worst I've ever seen him play for us, I think. Like, he, he just didn't look ready for the, the game, if, if you ask me, because like, he's, he's not usually that bad. He looked totally uncertain. And I think one of the big takeaways from the first two matches is that it looks like it's going to be Omar Bamadeli. Uh, unless he loses form or gets injured, I think it's going to be him plus one. So I think it is those two battling out for the final spot. I mean, you could probably play um, Ben with Andrew on Saturday, uh, in midweek, sorry, um, so that he gets the game out of his system. Um, mm. But I think when it comes to the whole game, it would, it would be Grant and it depends who needs it more, I suppose. But it does quite a point. Does I mean, it does feel a bit like Norwich might be a centre-back short at the moment. Um, I have to say... Well, no. <laughs> I'm just a bit worried that Sam is 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 sort of having a niggling fitness start to the season at the moment. And if you're already saying that Jakob Sørensen is going to need to cover at left back, possibly, Plenty you know, you can't then cover at centre back at the same time. So <laughs> yeah. um, that said, I am forgetting about Jonathan Tomkinson. And in fact, actually, um, Tuesday may be a really good game for him to mm -hmm. play. Rest Andrew, and then you could play uh, Ben and. Ben gets it out of his system and play Jonathan next to him at centre back. See how he gets on against a Premier League, a Premier League Championship team in the uh, in the cup. There we go. I've, can, I've solved um, it. Can Shemisa Boeta play tomorrow? I don't think you can play against your parent club and unless that's... we've put some agreement in place. Yeah. But maybe. But why? Why would you ever do it? Because <laughs> it's like. I mean, please, do you want? Do, think... do you want the obvious answer? <laughs> yes, kind of... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's he scored as many goals as Norwich this season, so I think less of the lip that's, uh, that's is what fair. I would say. I, I can't really. I don't like the stick that everyone gives him. He's like a young guy who's a Poland international. He probably is going to the World Cup, and everyone's just slating him as if he's the worst, least talented person they've ever seen on a football pitch. I'm just like, everyone, ease up! Like, why are you being so? Mean, I <laughs> don't I be he, mean, I everyone. Well. I hope he does well at Birmingham. Um, you could, to be fair, you could clip what Michael just said there and apply it to either Christos Scholes or Josh Sargent as well. You just run it, <laughs> run it back it when any, when anyone gets grief. You could just do that. Well, yeah, I mean, won't be tied anyone to cut me out and use me out of context. <laughs> um, uh, so I think we're done all that. Unless there's any more, we'll cut, if there's any more um, comments, then let us know, Stitch. Just, or, uh, uh, well, there aren't, but I have one more comment. Um, I do not want to see politicians standing outside Carrow Road with a green and yellow scarf to further their own ambitions. That's what I'm going to say on the matter. Did it? Did that happen on Saturday? <laughs> it happened last week, I think. Did it? Since the last, since the last podcast. Let's not. I don't. I don't want to turn on the ball into a into you know question time would, would time. you have said this if Hodgie had been on this um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> well, just, just to get a rise out of him yeah. if nothing else it would have come up long before now if Hodgie had been on this <laughs> there we go um we have one more little treat tonight which is of course because we've got our quiz master extraordinaire on the pod Ryan Livermore's latest quiz I, yes what is it oh, you'll you'll know it's... what it's called right it is, it is the uh, five second challenge, which we did my very first quiz. I thought I'd bring it back because it was Gosh. such good fun last it, time. Has it got a oh, name? No. <laughs> it's has called it name? Dan Brigham's Worst Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Was it like Andy, Pe Andy Peters or something? I can't remember what it was. That oh. it was, it was a good no, well, it was, it was name um, three Norwich midfielders in five seconds. And I could oh, only yes. think of Alex Ian, Tessie who had left. <laughs> Yeah. Ian, Ian Peters. Ian Peter, oh. World Cup winner Ian Peters. 
Oh yeah, that was, was that as well. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's well. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so Dan, Dan can go first. <laughs> Absolutely, Dan, you can go first. Okay. Name three Norwich City centre. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd have prepped for that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dan. In five seconds, I want you to name three of the teams Norwich beat in all competitions last season. And go. Uh, oh, Burnley, Everton, Bournemouth. Yes! Nice. Four and a half seconds. Well wow. done. I feel like I've redeemed Great myself a little now. Wow. That was really okay. impressive. I didn't realise you were timing as well. Oh, of course. It's the, it's the whole point of the game. It's the five-second challenge. Okay, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> you are, Steve, as Mr. Statsman, I'm giving you the hardest question because... I thought that one was hard. There, are, there are only three answers to this question. No I want you chance. to name the three teams... Norwich didn't lose to in the Premier League last season. Oh my god. And days. go. Brighton, Wolves, Burnley? Yes. Wow. Four seconds. Well wow. done. Wow. I would not. I'm I'm too I'm still on holiday mode. Ryan gave me a very long and there, which I think saved me. I just exactly. got no any. I'm a that. generous host. I'm a generous host. <laughs> no holidays for me. Michael. <laughs> Hi. Your go. Yeah, I want you to name three outfield players with over 30 starts in all competitions last season. Okay. Uh, and okay. go. Uh, McLean, Rashidza, uh, Les Malou. And... No, <laughs> we are done. You could have had McLean, Pookie, Hanley, Maybe Gibson or Aarons. I think it's a midfield. Did you not say midfield? Did I make no, that no, no, no. Oh. Three outfield players. Oh, outfield. Wow, I had a lovely holiday, so it's fine. Whatever, <laughs> <laughs> don't care. Had last season, let it go. Seconds, last season, <laughs> let it go. It's just gone. I think the whole quiz is going to get clipped out. To be honest, Dan. <laughs> <after> <laughs> <time>. <laughs> Okay, in the spirit of our two new South American signings, I would like you, Dan. Who's this for? Oh, right. This is for Dan. We'll go around in, in a circle. I'd like you to name three South American players to have played for Norwich and go. Emi Buendia, uh, Gutierrez, and... Oh, oh, out of time, out of time. I would have also accepted Sara, Nunez, Luciano, Be <laughs> <laughs> Luciano, yeah, Be Luciano Becchio, or Gary Doherty. I, well, uh, I always forget the current players, it seems. <laughs> Exactly. Well, then, yeah. Midfielders, what? they're midfielders, Dan. Yeah, midfielders. Exactly, there we go. Let's Michael the loves them. Oh, he is right. midfield even yeah. when it's not said. If you're having if you're having Gary Doherty, you'd have to have Russell Martin as well, obviously. That's true. <laughs> of course, so, of course, yes, absolutely. Same. Steve, can you please name three African players to have played for Norwich? And go. Mbakani, Malumbu, Safri? Yes, well done. That's good ones. There's some good ones there. Absolutely. Okay, Michael. Yes. You've been left with the one which I could find the least most answers for. So that I might need some fact checking on this as well. Well, I just need to listen this time. Yeah. You do. <laughs> I need you to name three Oceanian players to play for Norwich and go. Chris Killen, David Carney, and Andrew Leia. Oh, yes. Well done. Absolutely. That's meant. What an. Very good. That that very good. Brilliant. On that the anniversary was... of the 7 1 game as well. Yeah. We got exactly. the most famous of them all. <laughs> he was the first on my list. <laughs> I've blanked him from my memory, bless him. Bless Theo, him. The, what's he known as? What you know? Michael Theocletus. He changed yeah. his name to Michael Theo because apparently there were too many uh, bad things associated with Theocletus after <laughs> the 7 1 game. Is, is, that, is that the pinnacle of how bad your game is that you have, you know? Is that the worst game anyone's ever had that they've had to change their name off the back oh. of it? I really enjoyed uh, scrolling through Twitter earlier and seeing the Rewind Norwich City account. You know that one, which yeah. had yeah. Yes. <laughs> lots of old footage from the, from uh, old Norwich games and had footage from that 7-1 game. And just above it was liked by Brian Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> he's a star. He's it a shows star. he's and... over it. He's gone over it. <laughs> there, did they also include the clip of the season ticket holder who uh, came oh, and got his ticket? Was that I didn't watch video? it. I didn't watch it. I'm not sure why any Norwich fan would watch it. <laughs> well, I watched it all during lockdown uh, to to write the oral history and speak to some people, oh, yeah. including Brian Gunn. 
So it's still one of the best pieces I've written, I think. That so, is uh, it. In it my was a good article, yeah. that one. You can, uh, I shared it on Twitter earlier today, so you can read that. I believe you uh, used some quotes from the Grant Holt book, book in that, didn't you, Michael? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I credited it. <laughs> good point. As as written, uh, well, put, put together. But are we allowed to say that? <laughs> sure. Assisted by. Assisted, yeah. yeah. Have I just given that all away? I don't know. <laughs> Nor to biography. So Grant obviously wrote it and then obviously, yeah. Dan just sort of spell checked it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, put Naturally. the full stops in the right places. Made it which less was always normal. a challenge whenever whenever interviewing Grant Holt was knowing exactly <laughs> where to put the full stop in. Love Grant. Um, is that the quiz done? We've Ryan? got a couple more fun ones. Just some fun ones. Just a bit okay. of fun, guys. Last, on, last one. Okay, Dan, I need you to name three things you may see in a player reveal video. Go. <laughs> Uh, shirt, scarf, um, sexy look at the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take that. You started to say sexy look at the camera b- before the five seconds. Okay, thank that. you. I'll Very kind. You that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Steve, name three things you may see on the pitch at half time and go. Zorb, Dan Wynn, and some, <laughs> some veterans. <laughs> Sometimes they come on. You may see, right? Once, yeah, you may sure. hey, listen. Pensioners. Once a, once a year. Pensioners wandering uh, yeah. on. I'll got a bit lost. I'll, I'll let you have that as well. You started to say, and some veterans just before the mark. So we're good. We're good. Okay, Michael. And for yeah. you, the last question is name three things you'd see after seeing Norwich concede and go. Head and hands, someone going f- and um, a spilt beer. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. I'll have that. That's great. Well done, guys. You wouldn't see a spilt beer because you can't drink within sight of the stadium. So I've ruled myself out. I've done Max (laughs) Aarons. I'm taking myself out of that answer. (laughs) You'd see Michael Bailey furiously tweeting as well, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Providing I'm not on holiday, obviously. Um, (laughs) Brilliant work, Ryan. I I think quizzing was the winner there but also Absolutely. probably Always probably is. dan i, I, I think i think i'll give that as a dan win give it I, I dropped a point in the second one because i couldn't remember norwich city midfielders again well um, i'm going to be diplomatic and say it's a draw and give you two points michael for the oceanian answer because that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the fact that you we, we got dan win in twice eh? see i thought that worked quite well um <laughs> um d- steve did you have a question as well hmm We'll do it next week. We'll do it next week. Yeah, that's yeah. Why I'm I can't. I can't top what Ryan's just done. So why oh. even try? Why even uh, try? Well, that's going to be a better draw, I think, to next week than uh, <laughs> than what happened at Hull. Sure it will. So I'm just going to do it on that. Um, in that case, I think we're all done, aren't we? Because we, we've gone well over time again. But uh, and you've only got a week to listen to this one. So um, uh, we'll we'll I'll work on my time. I, to, do I even need to say that? And no one. You're not going to. So, no, no, too late now, isn't it? Um, but that is it for another on the ball, uh, the Norwich City podcast that may have to start learning Spanish and Portuguese. Uh, if you yet to do so, make sure you subscribe via your podcast player of choice. The pod is available free for everyone on your usual player, and we stream the recording of the podcast live in video form on my social media channels. So have a search and I'm sure you will find them. Ratings and reviews wherever prompted are always hugely appreciated. And if you want to get in touch with any questions or topic proposals, sling me a direct message on Twitter at Michael J. Bailey is the handle. Uh, As for this evening, firstly, a big thank you to Mark Carey for coming on and being an absolute star. You can read all of his superb work on The Athletic as well. He's he's always on the podcast and the TIFO podcast and all sorts of other stuff on The Athletic. So definitely give Mark a follow and um, and, uh, take in what he does. Uh, And of course, a big thank you for our guests on the pod this evening. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much. Top work on the quiz and your thoughts. Always appreciated. Thank you very much. Daniel, thank you. Uh, See you again soon, I hope. Thank you very much, Michael. A pleasure. Superstar. Steve, regards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks as always, Michael. I'll see you in seven days. And, uh, Probs. Better book some other people on, I suppose, hadn't I, as well. Um, which uh, which teases nicely that we will be back next week for Steve's question and another edition of On the Ball, a fresh bout of Canary's Capers. Until then, he says, just stalling slightly so we can get the outro music ready. Never mind the danger. <laughs>